we now turn our attention to the bewildering economy section to hear from an expert. The unfavorable circumstances continue to put South Korea's economy against growing headwinds. The local currency's value and inflationary pressures lie at the mercy of the U.S. Fed's interest rate hikes, as we previously discussed on the segment. Now, with the central bank's impending big step, what can we expect and will planned government interventions, including a currency swap deal, help alleviate the situation. We're joined by Professor Yang jun Sok of the Catholic University of Korea. Good morning, Professor Yang. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Let's jump into the deep end of this poll. The Bank of Korea's Monetary Policy Board will meet next Wednesday to decide on the country's second last benchmark interest rate hike of this year. Do you expect the central bank to take the big step, a rate hike of half of a percentage point? Well, considering what's happening with the uh, Korean won, the uh, depreciation, uh, raising the uh, rate, uh, interest rate by half percentage rate, uh, percentage point will be the uh, least bad choice. And currently it's widely expected. The major reason uh, for the depreciating won is thought to be the uh, difference between the uh, Korean and U.S. interest rates not only where it is currently, but where it's going. And currently, the uh, policy rate for the United States is 3.25% after they raised it by 75 basis points uh, at the uh, near the end of uh, September. Uh, and the uh, policy rate for Korea is currently 2.5%. Uh, so uh, there's already a, uh, a 75 basis point difference, uh, but the year-end interest rate for the United States is expected to be 4.5%. And if the Bank of Korea follows previously signaled rate increases of 25 basis points in October and November, then by the end of the year, the Korean rate will be only at 3%. So that's going to create a 1.5 percentage point gap, which is not only uh, larger than expected, but uh, during the uh, previous times that Korea had an interest rate reversal where the uh, Korean rate was lower than the U.S. rate, it never went beyond 75 basis points. And if the uh, Korea and U.S. follows the current scenario, uh, the end of the year difference will be twice that. And uh, right now, the the uh, market seems to be saying that that's just too big. Uh, that's going to uh, cause uh, the loss in the value of the won. Uh, so uh, in order to catch up with the United States and at least keep that difference within manageable levels, it does seem like the uh, Bank of Korea will have to raise the uh, interest rates by 50 basis points, not only uh, when it meets next week, but probably in November as well. And in November, they may even have to consider a 75 basis point increase. Hmm. Now, that's going to cause problems in the uh, Korean economy. Rise in interest rates tend to slow down the economy, slow down demand. Uh, hmm. Vice Prime Minister Chi kyung had expressed misgivings about raising the rates that much uh, during uh, a press conference. Uh, but I think uh, he was worried back then. But right now, I think he recognizes the need for a higher uh, interest rate increase. It's the least bad options. Uh, mm. It's the least bad option that Korea has right now. It seems that largely we are at the mercy of the U.S. Fed's interest rate hikes, uh, and the U.S. Fed is sticking with aggressive rate hikes as inflation stays hot. Uh, board members are warning against premature withdrawal from the fight against inflation. Based on your expertise, Professor Young, for how long would South Korea have to chase after the U.S. rate hikes to reduce the reversal then? Okay, well, even before the U.S. raised rates, uh, it was expected that Korea would have an interest rate reversal, but the idea was that it would the uh, size of the uh, interest rate gap between the U.S. and Korea should be limited to somewhere between 25 basis points to 50 basis points. Uh, but uh, in the uh, the difference between so the uh, previous uh, cases of interest rate reversals and current case is that in the past Korea had a solid trade surplus, but right now uh, Korea is experiencing trade deficits, and that tends to weaken confidence in the uh, currency. So that's an additional factor uh, that's weakening the Korean won that we did not have before. Now, how long will the U.S. keep on continuing the uh, interest rate increase? They've uh, pretty much said that they will uh, increase it until about uh, the beginning of next year. 
So Korea will probably have to keep on raising the interest rates uh, until the U.S. stops increasing. We don't have to follow the U.S. increases uh, percentage by percentage. Uh, Korea cannot uh, handle uh, that uh, very fast increase in interest rates, but we should try to keep up somewhat with it when the uh, U.S. raises it by 75 basis points. Korea should raise it between 25 to 50. Uh, so we should try to maintain at least some kind of pace with the United States. And uh, we'll probably have to do that until U.S. stops uh, raising the interest rates at the beginning of next year. Uh, but the, uh, the uh, Fed has also said that they, it's likely that they will maintain that high interest rate until at least the end of 2023, maybe up to uh, 2024. Uh, and uh, Korea will probably not be able to drop the rates until uh, while the U.S. is keeping that high level of interest rates, unless a uh, Korean trade account turns into a surplus. And then maybe we can have an option to uh, reduce the interest rate a bit, uh, but still, as long as the U.S. maintains a very high interest rate level, mm. Korea is probably going to have to keep it up as well. Mm. Uh, just for clarification purposes, Professor Yang, did you say that the Fed is expected to continue raising rates until the beginning of next year or the following year? Well, beginning of next year, so mm. that will be the beginning of 2023. Mm. All right. I also want to uh, take some time to discuss the ever so concerning one dollar exchange rate. The local currency has hit a fresh 13 year low against a dollar and some analysts are expecting the one would soar to as high as fifteen hundred this year against the U.S. dollar. So what is your projection based on your expertise, Professor Young? Okay, well, it's always dangerous to make predictions. (laughs) Uh, But uh, my projection is that if and this is a big if. Uh, everything goes to Korea's way, then the uh, one may not hit 1500 uh, But it really, uh, ha- everything has to go to Korea's way. And let me uh, tell you some of what that entails. First, the United States sticks to the current path on interest rates. That's uh, 75 basis points in October, 50 basis points in November, and perhaps another 25 basis points early next year. Uh, And then the Bank of Korea raises the uh, interest rates by at least 50 basis points in October and November. Uh, And the uh, third trade deficit turns into a surplus, which may be possible now because oil prices are dropping. And when the oil prices drop, well, Korean export value is going to fall as well because a lot of our uh, uh, export value was uh, based on petroleum products, which Mm -hmm. prices have went up. Mm -hmm. Uh, But also, it will uh, mean a faster drop in imports because, Mm -hmm. well, Korea imports a lot of uh, crude oil. Mm -hmm. Uh, But still, uh, the uh, Korean trade deficit uh, has to turn to a surplus. Mm -hmm. And then fourth, Korea gets a currency swap with the U.S., and I think this needs an explanation. Uh, We've seen the Korean won drop in value throughout the year. Uh, But until about a month ago, it wasn't uh, that worse than other countries. Uh, We were roughly in line with uh, Great Britain uh, and the uh, euro, and we dropped less than the uh, Japanese yen. Uh, But about a month ago, things changed. And it seems to be that uh, because of some of the factors that came up about a month ago, Korea had the largest monthly uh, trade deficit uh, for August. Uh, the, uh, we kept on uh, hoping that the uh, President Yoon would get a currency swap when he visited the United States, and he did not get one. Uh, so those kind of factors uh, seem to have uh, caused the uh, one ex- uh, one depreciation to accelerate. Mm. And part of that reason is, seems to be that uh, Korea did not get a currency swap with the U.S. Uh, mm. And that seems to be feeding sort of the uh, psychological nervousness or fear that the uh, market has. Mm. Uh, so we do. Uh, so if we do get a currency swap, I don't think it will affect the fundamentals. There will still be an interest rate difference. But because it will deal with the psychological factors, uh, it will slow down. Uh, the uh, depreciation of the yuan, not stop it, but slow it down. Mm -hmm. So that's another factor that we need, a a currency swap with the U.S. Uh, If the Korea does, and then the last factor is that uh, I mentioned that the uh, yuan depreciation has accelerated in about last month, Mm -hmm. and that seems to be because of the domestic 
or uh, Korean speculators, not necessarily foreign ones. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that seems to be sort of the same kind of uh, moves that we've seen in the last two years where uh, people try to speculate on things that the prices are going up. uh, So uh, Mm -hmm. we've seen that in housing, in Mm -hmm. Bitcoin, Mm -hmm. in the stock market, and now that money, whatever is left over, uh, from the uh, seems to be moving into the uh, currency market. So there needs to be some kind of a block on that currency speculation as well. Uh, maybe uh, for a large uh, speculator, people who buy large amount of dollars with no appreciative reasons why they should, mm-hmm. uh, maybe uh, Korean government can uh, throw a threat of a tax audit or uh, tracing the uh, where the funds came from, so mm-hmm. it'll discourage mm-hmm. that type of speculation by domestic players. Mm-hmm. Uh, if all these things come true, then perhaps we don't need to go uh, up to fifteen hundred. Mm-hmm. It, maybe it'll hit fifteen hundred uh, slightly, but it won't go too far beyond that. And uh, hopefully, it'll uh, stay there for a while. But if we don't do any of this, uh, then uh, there's a good chance it'll go beyond sixteen hundred. Um, and the government will probably do some of this and not do some of this. So that makes uh, the uh, projection really hard. Uh, <laughs> but still, uh, if we take uh, very uh, solid measures, uh, very uh, tough measures, mm-hmm. then I think we can stop the uh, one from going uh, beyond 1500 mm-hmm. Uh But it's going to take uh, a lot of pain, including the interest rate increases, getting the swap, and trying to uh, step down on uh, the uh, Korean speculators. Uh, A lot of conditions have to be met uh, to keep it at bay, but as you've said, solid measures do lie in place, so we'll wait and see. I I see how you cleverly dodged the actual estimation. Uh, Thank you, Professor Yang. (laughs) Moving on to our next question. The government announced plans to inject 5 trillion won to buy back treasury bonds to tame recent spikes in state bond yields on worsening global monetary tightening woes. Uh, How effective would it be in stabilizing the market volatility? Well, purchasing bonds usually have two purposes. Mm -hmm. Uh, First is, uh, by purchasing bonds, it raises the price of bonds, which is equivalent to lowering market uh, interest rates. Mm -hmm. Uh, The uh, Bank of Korea has control over policy interest rates, but only indirectly controls uh, market rates. Uh, The second purpose of buying bonds is supplying liquidity to the financial sector, which means uh, it gives out cash. Uh, So if there's a demand for cash, then the uh, Bank of Korea... Uh, by uh, treasury bonds. Mm -hmm. Uh, Right now, it seems to be the first purpose which is relevant rather than the second. Uh, Usually when uh, we see stock market going down, people move that money into the bond market. Mm -hmm. But currently, not only in Korea, but elsewhere, uh, other countries as well, people are moving the money out of financial markets completely, both stock and bond markets. So this is a bit unusual. And the uh, the, uh, weakening of the demand for bonds have lower bond prices and raised interest rates. So uh, purchasing bonds are a way for uh, Bank of Korea and the government to deal with uh, rising uh, market mm-hmm. uh, interest rates. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the uh, Bank of Korea is buying tr- $3 trillion ones worth of bonds. Ministry of Finance is buying $2 trillion, uh, $3 trillion ones worth. Uh, the uh, analysts say that this amount is relatively small. The uh, total government bond uh, outstanding is about 950 trillion won, Mm -hmm. but it is larger than the uh, usual government intervention, so Mm -hmm. it is enough to show government commitment. Mm -hmm. And uh, on September 29th, when the uh, intervention was announced, the announcement seemed to have a moderate effect on the market with a slight fall in the yields, the uh, interest rate Mm -hmm. of uh, 0.035%. Uh, the finance chief of South Korea and the U.S., uh, Chu kyung and uh, Janet Yellen, over the weekend agreed to implement liquidity facilities when financial instability is aggravated. How do you see the necessity and the possibility of a Seoul-Washington currency swap deal, it, it, even if it is belated? Okay, well, uh, it seems a bit strange that it's the executive branch, the uh, government, which is talking about currency mm-hmm. swaps, because currency swaps in the United States are given by the Fed. And the uh, conversation, uh, I'm sure that it's taking place, uh, but the important conversation is not between 
the uh, minister and the uh, treasury secretary, uh, but between the head governor of Bank of Korea and the uh, Federal Reserve. Uh, and we're getting very little on that conversation. We're getting a lot of coverage on executive branch mm-hmm. conversations, and that's actually the wrong focus. Mm-hmm. And what we do know right now is that the Fed is not overly enthusiastic about giving out uh, currency swaps. Mm-hmm. One reason is that the uh, Fed has uh, the uh, tools to hand out uh, cash to Korea and other countries. It's called the FEMA facility. Mm -hmm. And what the FEMA facility does is uh, Korea has a lot of uh, U.S. government bonds in the foreign reserves, Mm -hmm. and Korea can use those foreign reserves as a collateral to get up to $60 billion worth of uh, U.S. dollars in cash. Mm -hmm. Uh, So that effectively works as a currency swap. Uh, And then, uh, secondly, uh, the whole purpose of the United States raising its interest rate right now is to reduce liquidity in the market, to reduce inflation. And what the currency swap does is it gives cash U.S. dollars to other countries. And they may not want to do that right now when they're trying to reduce the total supply of dollars uh, in the uh, global economy. Mm. Uh, We've seen this before. Uh, The uh, Fed is usually very reluctant about giving currency swaps to countries other than the G7 countries and Switzerland. Mm. Uh, And we've had problems getting uh, currency swaps in the past. 2008 uh, Mm. uh, uh, global financial crisis, Mm. uh, we uh, barely got uh, swaps. Mm. Uh, But the... uh, pandemic was an exception because mm-hmm. during the pandemic what the united states wanted to do was increase liquidity in the united states and globally so at that time they freely gave our currency swaps but i think they're going to be tougher this time mm-hmm. because this time the uh, fed's goal is to reduce uh the uh, total amount of uh, u.s dollars in the world uh, now uh As to getting the currency swaps, will it help Korea? As I mentioned before, I think it'll deal with some of the uh, psychological effect Mm. that's built in the uh, Korean financial market. And part of that reason is that we did not get the swap uh, uh, before, Uh, or at least uh, when the uh, President Yoon visited uh, Washington, uh, visited the United States when everybody was expecting to get the swap. So I think not getting it had a psychological effect, which accelerated the depreciation. Uh, mm-hmm. But will the uh, currency swaps stop the depreciation? Probably not, mm-hmm. uh, because the uh, fundamentals, uh, the uh, rising gap in the interest rates, the uh, trade deficits, those are still going to be there. So what the currency swap will probably do is slow down the depreciation, but it will not stop it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, depreciation will probably not stop until that the uh, U- U.S. stops increasing the interest rates mm. and the uh, Korean trade account turns to a surplus. And the interest rate hikes are expected until, at, the, at, the, at least until the end of this year and the ripple effects will continue to next year. Thank you for clarifying some of those murky water questions. Uh, Professor Young, a pleasure as always. Thank you. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.